You're watching Telecom TV's exclusive video coverage of the MEF annual members meeting from here in Vancouver. I'm joined now by Kevin Vachon, who is the COO of the MEF. Kevin, thanks for talking with us today. Yeah, great to hear, be here, Guy. It's a great event, this. There's a, a lot of activities going on, a lot, lot of meetings with your, with your members. Um, what are the main issues that are being addressed here? What are the main industry issues that the MEF is facing? Well, one of the issues we have is just uh, making the rest of the industry aware of what our new position and a new, what our new vision and strategy. You know, we're historically very, very well known for um, having defined uh, you know, Ethernet, uh, network architectures, connectivity services, certifying those services, establishing a very common terminology in the industry. And, and now we have a lot of education to do just to make people aware that we're really focused on orchestration end-to-end, -end, but at the same time, we're still continuing to evolve the services work. So it's a bit of a change of, of uh, it's an expansion of scope, and uh, there's some work to be done to just get the message out there. Now, you've announced some new programs um, recently, for instance, the Service Interconnect program. What's the rationale behind these? Yeah, the Services Interconnect program, as well as something called the Ethernet Interconnect program, is really, um, Service Interconnect, uh, firstly, is really designed to be a program, it's a program targeted at small operators to bring them into the ecosystem. The tier ones and the twos and most of the threes of the world are are delivering standardized services. This enables a lot of the small players that are instrumental in providing you know, standardized Ethernet access to large buyers of services. This brings them into the standardized Ethernet uh, uh, ecosystem. And the Ethernet Interconnect Points program? Yeah, it's, it's more of a, you know, it, it's almost going to be like a, an implementation guide or a cookbook on how standardized interconnects occur. And so if I am a small operator and I want to connect to a big operator or to like size. This is the cookbook on how you do these. How you're going to do that? These are the standards that are going to apply. Uh, physical location considerations and a whole bunch of other technical uh, issues as well. So you're trying to you give these smaller, uh, uh, lower tier operators as much help as possible. Yeah, exactly. So that we we're really providing the industry with a with a cookbook in terms of how you know all of the issues and all of the mandatory requirements for standardized interconnect. Um, and as the, the world migrates from TDM to Ethernet, they want to do it as efficiently as possible. And they don't want to have these, ether, these interconnects being different uh, for every different operator, you know, peering arrangement that you may have. So there's still um, a, a lot of work on, on CE 2.0 um, that, that's, that's occupying your, your, your time, and that leads into the third network. Absolutely. And we've been uh, very clear with our messaging and our marketing that we believe 2.0 is the foundation upon which new innovation will be, be built, like dynamic services, uh, enabling automation and, uh, of end-to-end uh, -end, you know, service delivery as well. So this comes onto, onto the second uh, stream you were mentioning, uh, life cycle services orchestration. What's, what's the rationale behind that? Well, you know, for years now, uh, we've seen Ethernet services volumes growing, but the, um, you know, the, the process of, of uh, managing those services in, in many cases is still not automated. It takes time to provision services, especially when we're dealing with multiple operators. The goal of LSO is to enable end-to-end -end full orchestration, and in particular, where MEF is focused, is across multiple provider networks because that is the reality most of the time. It's more than one service provider involved with delivering service to an end customer. So where are you with that work then? Well, we've actually made a huge amount of progress in a sense that we have reference architectures. We're defining quite a number of different interfaces. We have, uh, we have a number of bilateral projects going on with other open source projects, SDOs, associations. We're getting a lot of traction in the industry, very broad exception of the, or acceptance, I should say, of the concepts, uh, the, the, the nature of the work, that the, the requirements by the industry, I, I should say, and, um, and so it's progressing quite well. So, so you're, you're, you're open to collaboration with, with other standards development organizations and, and, and associations in order to bring all the different disparate elements together? Yes, absolutely. We felt it was really important for us to A, vet our ideas first with a number of key organizations that we thought were going to be central players. Uh, and then we wanted to take a kind of lead role, you know, to really lead the ecosystem for LSO. And, and, uh, and we know that there are, you know, for example, we, we, you know, we're, as it relates to the orchestration across virtual 
devices, uh, virtual functions, we're going to be working with that CNFV and OPNFV and so on and so forth. We're working with the ONF on SDN related matters. So um, yeah, clearly you're not going to do this alone and, uh, and absolutely you don't want to be replicating work that other associations are doing. You want to accelerate, you know, bring this to market. And obviously all of this is, is coming from the demands of the service providers. Yes, and, and you know, the MEF has been, um, uh, we have a, a membership which is roughly two-thirds providers. Two-thirds of our 220 members are service providers. So that has meant that we've always really had the input from those organizations that are building services to, to be sold and users. And that's also been instrumental in um, ensuring that the vendors come on board because they see that the demand is for, from service providers. They know that if they're going to be building these functions in their devices, it's what the service providers are looking for. Now, in a few months' time, the industry meets up in Dallas for Gen 15. What can we expect at that event, and what will be the main talking points of that event? Well, you know, Gen 15 is really bringing together all of the main topical areas that we're involved in, the future of Care Ethernet, the, the migration strategies to agile, assured, orchestrated services, the impact of, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're going to we have 14, for example, proof of concept demonstrations showing cases, uh, different aspects of the evolution of the market. We're, we're looking at issues from a retail business services perspective, a wholesale perspective, what's going to be happening with Ethernet in 5G, what, where is it at for 4G, so really all issues of Ethernet and beyond. Well, we look forward to Gen 15 in Dallas later this year. For now, Kevin, thank you very much indeed. Great, thank you.